Uh, good evening, everyone. And as usual, we have a topic which is very niche, and the speaker is also who can take different perspective. In one of the groups, there was a lot of discussion that we should have a session on co-ownership and ouster in partition suit. So we thought a person who can dive deep into it, who can actually sieve out the different facts with law. Amongst those speakers, Mr. K. Prabhakar's name struck in our mind and we requested him. And he also gets, I suppose, fascinated with the introducing topics so that he can dive, have a more deeper dive into it. And therefore, in this present session, he will be taking in respect of what is the practice as well as law in this subject, which is quite interesting. That is co-ownership and ouster in, ouster in the partition suits. Being a weekend, we will not take much time. I will request Mr. Prabhakar to take over the session. Good evening, friends. The possessory right, which is the foundation of... Uh, a title, adverse possession, ouster, in some form, even though it is not title in respect of uh, easement by prescription, this country valued possession. The first occupant always is uh, stated to be the owner of the property. The legality of the issue with regard to possessory right and subsequently the title of the long possession converted into title probably started with the 200 to 300 years ago. Before that, somebody who is in possession is deemed to be the owner of the property. The Registration Act, which came in only the early part of the 19th century, which you put the nail in the coffin, namely to recognize the possession by converting this possession into title. You can imagine how a person can trace his title to the property, say for example, 100 years, 150 years or 200 years before. And if law demands them to prove that also in some cases where the religious institutions or parties, uh, the court uh, demand us to show a right which uh, spans two centuries before. And therefore, this uh, possession really matters. In a sense, there are a long list of cases where the courts have held that the possession is title in respect of uh, the whole world except the true owner. This uh, maxim that the person in possession is entitled to protect his possession has also been elevated to the status of a ownership. Namely, the courts have granted even not injunction, but also declaration in specific cases where if a party comes to the court and say that I have got a possessory right, a possessory right again the whole world except the true owner, can be declared so by a court of law. And therefore, this possession or a possessory right is invaluable. But the rider is that the parties who are co-sharers or joint owners are members of a joint family. Whether this theory can be pressed into service, and if it can be pressed into service, how far you can go. That is the practice and law which we are going to discuss today evening. Uh, joint owners, co-owners, co-sharers, and the members of a joint family, even though in colloquially we think everything is one and the same, may not be in the real sense of the word. The reason is there are many people who will be joint tenants are tenants in common are members of a joint family who is uh, who are in uh, the person who is in uh, a member of a family by birth is uh, presumed to be a person who is uh, in joint possession of the joint family properties similarly a person or a 
one or two or more persons join together and purchase the property this is not a case of a joint family but two or three strangers join together and purchase the property and can we stretch this theory of presumption that a person in possession of the property is still held to be a in possession on behalf of other co-owners the second point is who are the tenants in common without touching the point of a joint family tenants in common namely persons who are entitled to the property as a legatee under a will then they are not taking the property as members of a family but the right on the demise of the testator tenant, uh, is that of a tenant tenants in common joint tenancy is different from tenants in common we are not interested in uh, joint tenancy we are more on to the suits for partition and how the party who is in exclusive possession of the property for a quite number of years is entitled to defend his right against the other co-sharers or co-owners or even uh, members of a joint family the law doesn't take uh, a view namely a lenient view that a person who is in considerable length of time in possession of the property can there be a presumption that uh, this person is in possession of the property in derogation of the rights of the other co-owners even though there is a long list of cases we are going to discuss today this uh, theory of possession which is uh, quite attached to adverse possession in respect of a strangers and in respect of a co-sharer co-owner or members of a family as ouster one has to see that uh, the law of adverse possession itself took a turn somewhere in 2009 when his lordship uh, delvi bandari made a point that uh, this is quite against uh, human rights and therefore your possessory right cannot be uh, given effect to and subsequently in 2011 or so years again reiterated the principle that this uh, at the concept of adverse possession after 12 years at least the parliament should enact and increases the period to 30 years quite unfortunately when slashi delivered bandari delivered the judgment on the basis of a, a judgment of the british court which is said that it is in violation of the human rights quite unfortunately it was not brought to his lordship about the judgment having been overturned subsequently therefore from 2009 courts in india started thinking that the right of possession should not be given the effect to thinking that uh, it is a violation of a right of a property a grabber of a property cannot be given any legal status if i remember correctly in one judgment of his uh, Lordship uh, S. Mohan and Aina Sundaram of the Madras High Court reported in the year 1989 Madras. They would say that the possession is not uh, a person in possession of the property. Adversely to another, there is no need to uh, be ashamed of uh, taking such a plea. But after his Lordship uh, Arun Mishra's judgment, wherein his Lordship has restored the principle that a person in possession adversely can also file a suit on title restore the original position that uh, there is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of if a person says that he is in possession of the property for quite number of years and thereby he has prescribed the right to the property this has been a court not now long time back and one of the judgment which i will frequently with the courts have referred to is varadar pillai versus jeevaratna ma reported in ilr 1919 madras page 244 a judgment of the privy council varadar pillai versus jeevaratna ma 
reported in ILR 1919, Madras page 244, Privy Council, where the Lordship would say that a possessory right as such can be traced to a gift deed which is unregistered and which cannot even be recognized in a court of law. That was a case where a person put forward the plea of adverse possession as well on the basis of a, an unregistered gift deed. The Privy Council held that even though the document by the mere fact that it has not been registered cannot be used for showing its title, it can be used to show that from that point of time, possession of that uh, person under the the unregistered gift deed may be adverse to the other two owners. The ouster as such, what is an ouster? This principle has to be distinguished from adverse possession. In both the cases, whether it is adverse possession or ouster, there should be continuity, adequacy and openness. Namely, a person who says that he is in possession of the property, it should be adequate, then continuous, uninterrupted, hostile, title to the true owner. But these are all concepts which apply to a case of an adverse possession as well as that of an outster. An overt act that I am in possession of the property in derogation of anybody's right even if they have a true owner, is enough in case of a person pleading adverse possession against a stranger. But uh, your overt act showing that, yes, I am in possession of the property, I have put up construction, etc., may not be necessary if you want to put up a case against uh, a person who is a co-sharer or a joint owner or a member of a joint family. The difference is this. In case of an ouster, the law says that you were right to be in possession of the property for a long number of years should be not only over hostile continuous, but to the knowledge of the other co-sharers, namely your possession is in derogation or in denial of the right of the other co-sharers. You should bring to the notice of the other co-sharers, namely, you go and say that you are not the owner, you don't have any share in the property, I am the absolute owner of the property, I, en I am entitled to enjoy the property. Then, if a period of 12 years lapses from that day, then only you can say that you have ousted the right of the parties. Uh, does it require for a person to go to the top of a gobra or a church and to beat the trumpet to say that, uh, yes, I am in possession of the property? In case of an adverse possession, that is not necessary. But in case of an ouster, the necessity of showing to the true word. The difference is this. In case of an adverse possession, an overt act of enjoying the property as your property is enough. If the neighborhood thinks that you are the owner and you enjoy the property, even if it has not been brought to the knowledge of the other man, then also you can plead and prove adverse possession. But this overtake and to the knowledge of the neighborhood is not enough in case of a person who is a co-owner along with you. In such cases, you must bring to the notice of the other man that I am in possession of the property. I am enjoying the property as my property and you don't claim any right. It is in derogation of his right in denial of his right, and then subsequently the period of 12 years should have lapsed. Then only you can take a plea of outstanding. But 
the earlier cases i'm not sure whether the courts will entertain such a plea today but earlier cases would show that this case of a ouster can even be inferred from the conduct of the parties many cases we say that uh, uh, there is no plea of adverse possession and even a mere plea of adverse possession in a single line is not enough you should specifically plead the date from which you did your possession has become adverse etc there is a lot of confusion in case of uh, yeah, upholding the right of possession or a possessory right for a longer period whether it is adverse possession where it, it is ouster the reason is in many cases if a defendant comes to the court he cannot bank upon the principle of adverse possession because you have to admit the title of the true owner and they say that i am in possession of the property in derogation of your right normally no lawyer or trial or no trial lawyer rather would take such a single plea what you would, would do is deny the right of the plaintiff over the true property and simultaneously you would take a plea of adverse possession or ouster etc in such a cases the courts have frowned upon the person who claims title to the property as well as adverse possession thinking that both of them cannot go to the gather there are many judgments wherein the courts have held that it is not possible and many of the high courts uh, indiscriminately dismisses the claim of adverse possession because they have claimed the title also in one case is lordship ravindran if i remember a year 2009 ashwath mahamas case is lordship ravindran catched the point beautifully where is lordship would say that a person claiming title in respect of the property against x and at the same time wants to claim a right of adverse possession against y or the plaintiff he is entitled to do it the point at issue is a person in possession of the property if you want to plead and succeed adverse possession he can say once a suit has been filed by the plaintiff with the real owner you are not the owner of the property and at the same time you can also say that i have purchased the property not from you from a third party and from the date of the sale it 12 years have elapsed and therefore you are not the owner of the property and at simultaneously i have prescribed title again of, of uh, by adverse possession against you because i have purchased the property not from you i have not traced the title to the plaintiff but to third party this has to be banned in mind the reason is this many courts have held that title and adverse possession cannot go together similarly this ashwatthama case gave a clarification i doubt that many of the courts even doesn't want to follow in case of adverse possession title and adverse possession can be pleaded provided you have not traced your title to the plaintiff or you have under one status or the other took possession from the plaintiff or his predecessor in title and then you want to convert that into the tough and adverse possession in such a case law demands that you must give a specific date when you have denied the title of the plaintiff say for example 111990 before that i was a tenant or a mortgagee under the plaintiff I, on 111990 i gave a notice to the plaintiff stating that you are not the owner you disown this right and then afterwards my possession is adverse to you and there are 12 years have lapsed only in such a cases where you come into possession of the property in one status or the other from the plaintiff or his predecessor in title then you cannot plea a adverse possession unless you disown that and giving a date from which your possession has become adverse but if you take a right of uh, denying the right of the plaintiff and claiming a right of uh, adverse possession on the basis that you have purchased the property from x who is a stranger then you are entitled to do it if you are able to prove it that is a aswatamas case 
Now coming to this outster, law can also infer outster. There is absolutely no need for you to plead the exact word of outster. In some cases, uh, under the specific relief act, ready and willingness, everybody would say that ready and willingness has to be pleaded and proved before the amendment. Now it uh, you need not hour. It uh, you have to prove. But uh, in one or two judgments of the Supreme Court, they have said that uh, there is no need to use that exact word. What you have to do is summon substance of the pleading is enough to show that this is the plea which has taken. In many of the cases, the foundation in respect of a civil suits arose from a mufassal pleading. And therefore, the pleading has to be read as a whole and to find out what is the real nature of the right claimed by the party, whether it is ouster or not. It can also be inferred. Inference, what is the type of inference of an ouster? The law says, or the many of the judgments uh, would say that it can be inferred provided you are able to show your possession continuously and derogation of the other man's right. And if the other man kept to quiet, notwithstanding the fact that he could have found out that your possession is denial of his right. And if he kept keep quiet, then this inference will kick in. Straight away, a beautiful judgment of the Patna High Court in Badma Pandey versus Ban Saru Pandey. Badma Pandey versus Ban Saru Pandey, AR 1920, Patna, page 260. There is a case where Parties live together in the very same village. One of them, one of the co-owner or a member of a family took possession of a particular property. He started enjoying the property as his absolute property. And when the other members tried to barge in or enter the property, they have been prevented. In such a case, the court said that the parties are living in the very same village and one of them is in possession exclusively for 25 years and has made some improvement in the property, say, for example, build, put up, putting up a small shed or a building, etc. And this is all could have been found out by the other members of the family or a co-owner because he is residing in the same village. In such cases, a yeah, village is a small place, right? Therefore, you can if you are interested in knowing things, you could have easily found out that this man is in possession of the property, maybe in derogation of his right. That can be inferred from the conduct that this man has got knowledge of denial of title by the other man. And still, he kept to quiet. He did not raise his little finger. And if the time has lapsed, then the plea of Outster will kick in. The second day, Bengata Rao versus Bengo Barao. Bengata Rao versus Bengo Barao. AR 1927 Madras. AR 1927 Madras, page 595. The court said that uh, there can be an inference of an outster from very many circumstances. One of them is if a person is in exclusive possession, and he demolishes a superstructure there on a dilapidated structure and put up a new construction in the property by spending money, etc. And preventing other members to enter the house after the new construction. Saying that I have put up the house. It is my property. You can't bargain. And after that, 12 years have lapsed, then the plea of house has to be necessarily inferred by the court. The next case is Ganga Adar was Parasram. Ganga Adar was as Parasram. 29 ILR 1905, page 300. 29 ILR Bombay, page 300. Bombay. 29 ILR Bombay, page 300. Ganga Adar was as Parasram. In that case, a property has been rented out. And the rent was received by only one member and he has not uh, shared that income with the other members or the other co-owners. And on facts, it has been established that for more than 50 years, 
a single individual who is alleged to be a co-owner of the property received the rent continually without sharing the same with the other members the other members kept quiet and did not raise their voice in such a case the court said that uh, if you have not received the rent for 50 years from a property knowing full well that you have got some right over the property in such a cases the law has to infer that there is a case of an ouster remember these are all old cases where the exposure to the world was very very limited even in such a cases the law has inferred about adverse possession law has inferred about the ouster but now the present day world a person in trichy or madurai can very well know what is happening in chandigarh the level of uh, media available and the level of exposure available to a person is so huge and tremendous in such a case whether the inference has to be given a go by and demand something else or something more when under years before the courts have inferred can we not infer this in the present circumstances or to demand more than a mere inference of ouster i beg to differ from the many of the judgments where they have watered down this principle of inference of ouster stating that you require some concrete proof if a person can be barred 100 years ago when there was absolutely no exposure available how this principle should not be applied in a present day world where everybody is on his toes i played it before this forum the next case is lakshmi reddy versus lakshmi reddy 19 ar 1957 supreme court page 314 ar 1957 supreme court page 314 there is a very interesting case where the court has uh, inferred ouster in fact it has also referred if i remember correctly of his lordship uh, vishnu sastri judgment reported in 1951 madras where the inference is possible the inference with regard to what that is a question this has been again considered by the honorable supreme court in untakal lp chenna basavanna gau untakal lp chenna basavanna gau versus maha balleshwarappa ar 1954 supreme court page 337 that is a very interesting case where a person lost his possession the other man started enjoying the property ousting your right and then the person who lost the possession make some hue and cry a mental act not taking any steps in a court of law a mental act stating that i am also the owner of the property joint owner of the property i have got also a right he makes all kinds of sound bites but of no substance can there be an ouster ouster requires a strong proof and now if you take the decisions of the present day world inferences also cannot be taken lightly but can a person who raises a voice because uh, the law says it should be continuous uninterrupted open hostile these are all things available by a person who say that i have ousted your right and the person who lost possession makes a hue and cry makes sound bites you are not the absolute owner your possession is not that of an exclusive owner i am also the owner of the property i am entitled to share in the property these are all sound bites he makes assuming for a moment he gives a notice then he keeps quiet can there be an ouster or not the law says mere mental act on the part of the person dispossessed dispossessed 
unaccompanied by change or character of possession is not enough to defeat the claim of an outstar mere mental act on the part of the person disposes unaccompanied by change of character of possession is not enough to defeat the claim of outstar a person outstar from property he makes a mental act he makes a human cry he says i am also entered to the property you cannot enjoy it exclusively but the unaccompanied by change of character in possession you need not go to the court but a person claims that he is in exclusive possession and you say that i have got a right also you barge into the property you stay in one portion of the property then that changes the character of possession of an exclusive possession of somebody to the defa joint possession law doesn't force you to go to the court law says that you have to change the character of possession when a person started enjoying the property stating that i have ousted your right and within that window period of 12 years you barge into the property and be in possession of a portion of the property and become a joint possessor of the property then you can defeat the claim it is not necessary that in all cases you have to go to the court for a joint possession claim or the defa filing a suit for partition the next case kandu versus kochi 1971 kandu versus kochi 1971 3 scc page 784 1971 scc page 784 that was a case where a person took a plea of outstep but there were evidence to show that this man who claims a right of uh, possession by ousting the other man's right paying some money to the other members of the family namely the sharing the profits say for example the rent lease rental or income from the pro- agriculture properties what we took in the court was i out of generosity to the other members of the family i have distributed small portion of the income but i enjoyed the major portion assuming for a woman the annual income from a particular property is a lack of rupee i gave my joint owners uh, 100 rupees each or 500 rupees each and this man took a plea that it was only out of uh, affection to the other members of the family therefore uh, the i have pleaded outside it has to be upheld the court said even a minuscule portion of the rent or profit is shared with the members of the family it has to be traced to the defer right to the property rather than the largest sea of the person who distribute out of affection therefore once a sum portion of the income is is shared and if there is any evidence to that effect the law will infer that you received that income or the profit from the property as a co owner or a co sharer and not out of the larger sea or affection by the other member of the family who take a plea of outstep the next case one of the very interesting case moidin abdul qadir versus mohammed moidin moidin abdul qadir versus uh, mohammed moidin 1970 ilr 2 page number 636 1970 ilr madras page volume 2 page 3636 page 636 kindly go through the judgment i'll give that uh, the list contained the madras is missing 1970 ilr madras volume 2 636 i think in many of the search engines it is available moidin abdul qadir versus mohammed moidin a very lengthy judgment on two aspects there is a wonderful judgment of his lordship k s ramamurthy and bengatraman of the madras high court where hundreds of ruling has been referred to of 
English law as well as the Indian courts of various high courts, including Allahabad, Calcutta, Bombay, etc. And they have come out with the, some, uh, after uh, discussing all the aspects, they came to a conclusion that the ouster has to be pleaded and proved. But in cases where a person is in exclusive possession or receiving the rent or profits for a quite long years, without stating or denying the right of the person, then the court can infer that there was an ouster. Law has been successfully stated like this. If a person enjoys the profit or rental income from the property quite a number of years, and he did not state to the other co-sharers that I have denied your right. I am in possession or receiving the rent in derogation of my right. But he goes on receiving the rent, goes on receiving the profits from the property, say for 40 years, 50 years or 60 years. And if the other co-sharers or co-owners keep quiet, then notwithstanding the fact that this man who said that he has ousted the right of the other man, could not establish before a court of law that from particular day I have denied that right of the other co-owners, for which there is no proof. In many cases, I, uh, we can even visualize a person who uh, conduct case before a trial court, which has taken a plea of ouster, but will be in a very difficult position to say or pinpoint from when the possession of the person is in derogation or denial of the title of the other co sharers Because in many cases, this fellow will be enjoying the property. Even if he has denied the right, it will be only orally, there may not be any proof. Therefore, for those people, this inference from long and continuous possession of the property and receiving the rent or profits will go a long way to show that he is in, he is in possession of the property by ousting the right. The law can infer notwithstanding the fact that this man was not in a position to pinpoint when he had denied the title of the other poor. Longer the possession, stronger the inference. Suppose a person is a uh, possession for only 13 years, 15 years. The law says the mechanism is only 12 years. And if this person is able to show only for 15 years and there is no evidence on record to show that on a particular day he has denied the title and he has been enjoying of the property, enjoying the property continuously for more than 12 years. In such a case, the, the courts will be hesitant to accept the theory. And the converse, if a person is in possession of the property continuously for 50 years, and he received the rent. And the person who claimed that he has a joint owner over the property was not in a position to show that at any point of time he has disturbed the possession. At any point of time he has received his share of the income. And in the absence of the same, the court can take an inference. Namely, longer the possession or enjoyment of the fruits of the property stronger the inference. The <laughs> next case, Shambhu Prasad Singh versus uh, Poonam Kumari. Shambhu Prasad Singh versus Poonam Kumari, AR 1971. AR 1971, Supreme Court, page 1337. In that case, the court has referred to the 1954 judgment and has said that uh, Ouster requires a pleading. And uh, it did not go into the question of uh, inference, etc. But uh, the court said that uh, long possession of the property, a person can oust the rights of the other co sharer. It's not that uh, it should be <coughs> a person in possession of the property is deemed to be in possession of the other co-sharers. Normally, the theory is 
if a person is in possession his possession is not that of an exclusive owner if there are other co owners his possession is on behalf of other co owners and if you want to break this chain you then there must be a proof when it the chain was broken and if there is no date for breaking the chain the long possession may lead to an inf inference about the breaking of the chain another judgment anjappa versus somalingappa anjappa versus somalingappa 2006 7 scc 570 7 scc 570 anjappa versus somalingappa 2006 7 scc page 570 there was a case where there was no pleading about outstanding but uh, someone sir i think if i remember correctly it was altamus kabir etc or kajju if i remember it is kajju and uh, slaship kajju and sinna where the lordship after reading the entire pleading found that the what this man want to convey the meaning is that his possession is in denial of the right of the plaintiff who has come forward with the suit and this denial is nothing but the outstep and the courts have also said that it is a mofasil pleading therefore one should uh, pluck out the pith and substance of the pleading rather than seeing the pleading whether it, the word outstep is there or not there is no need for uh, uh, using the exact words there is absolutely no even in case of an adverse possession there is no need for you to use the exact words but the problem is it is it is very difficult for us to convince the court if there is no word to that effect because uh, law is different from justice justice is based upon an individual facts and circumstances of an individual case but the law says that it doesn't require the exact words but the very same judge in one case he will say that there is no pleading in another case he will say that there is a pleading that the even if there is no pleading it can be upheld because that amount of discretion is available to the court when you wants to take up the case of outstar or adverse possession very same state of facts one judge may take the plea of outstar one judge may refuse to take that and they can very well say that all the facts or circumstances are not identical therefore by way of abundant caution in cases where you want to plea adverse possession and outstar do make a plea and also do make a plea that when it has become adverse or if you have got a title deed you say that i have got a title deed in, a, in so and so sale deed or etc from that uh, the possession against the plaintiff is adverse another case very interesting case govindamal versus permal chettiya govindamal versus permal chettiya 2006 11acc page 600 2006 11acc page 600 where a lady comes forward with a partition suit the lady first issued somewhere uh, in 1955 or 56 she issues a notice demanding partition and she kept quiet after 25 years she filed a suit stating that after uh, if she made a plea in the plain i have issued a notice i went to my brother who is the defendant and he said that uh, he will give a share of the property afterwards therefore i kept quiet in that case also the there was a denial of right of the plaintiff in the reply still this lordship if i remember altamus kabi and another judge has said mere issuance of the notice will not uh, deny the right of the party because unless and until outstar is pleaded and proved the lady is entitled to be a share mere denial in the notice is not enough because she has made a plea that she went and met her brother and his brother has said that she will he will give the property or give the share in in such a case the courts have taken a lenient view therefore 
probably in another same set of facts the court may say that once a notice has been issued and if you kept quiet for 12 years you lose right what is that may the inference which the courts have held from 1919 jeevaratnamas case varadapullai uh, case is that the inference is enough but the very same court has said that this inference cannot be taken in the facts and circumstances because mere issuance of notice is not enough that much of discretion is available to the court there is no straight jacket formula where you can use it, point number 1 2 3 therefore there is a outstep there is no outstep that's not the case and cannot be done and now between the co owners whether really one has to go for a partition there is a, if i remember there is one section under section 43 of 44 of the tp act where a person can also get a declaration of his share in the joint family property or a co ownership without disturbing it namely if i am the owner of one third share of the property i can go and ask for one third share the, for a declaratory right also but the point is can a court grant an injunction against another co owner who is in exclusive possession of the property and he is, he is trying to change the character of the property long line of cases and first which will come to my mind is santram nagina ram santram nagina ram versus daya ram nagina ram santram nagina ram versus daya ram nagina ram ar 1961 punjab and haryana page 528 page 528 ar 1961 punjab haryana page 528 of his lordship take chan just go and read the judgment a beautiful judgment on co ownership ultimately as the court have waded through all the judgments and made some uh, point wise discussion and the submission that in case of a co owner a person in possession is deemed to be in possession on behalf of all the co-owners that the first point second if a person in possession on exclusive possession is entitled to use the property till a partition suit is filed three if a person in possession of the property suppose uh, if you want to change the character of possession of the property or to, to put up a building then it has to be decided on facts by on each case namely the construction can be over and subsequently you come to the court or the moment the construction is started you come to the court three a person in possession of the property is entitled to assuming for a moment one third share or one fourth share and he is putting only uh, a construction within the limit of his one third share or one fourth share these are the consideration which has to be taken in account go and read ar 1961 punjab and haryana page 528 to master this law of ownership co ownership along with another judgment i'll come to the allahabad high court of 1951 this judgment therefore says that it is not an inviolable rule that a person cannot put up a construction if he puts up construction in the property it is at his peril the other man is entitled to partition but can the person who says that i am also a co owner of the property file a suit for injunction that the, the other man should not put up construction this can be done provided he shows two things one it is detrimental to his interest two he comes to the court immediately the moment the other person start putting up construction you come to the court and you say that it is detrimental to interest three if the construction put up or proposed to be put up is not in respect of his share alone but he goes beyond that suppose he is entitled to only one fourth share and this man started putting up construction in two fourth share or two third share then the court can exercise and another point is if a person who purchased the property and started putting up construction from one co owner can he be called as a bona fide purchaser in one case after the case come to the court 
the person who purchased the property go on constructing the property in such a case the court can even order demolition of the property that can happen just to see chedi lal versus chote lal ar 1951 page 199 chedi lal versus chote lal ar 1951 page 199 the full bench decision that is lachit gulam husain has waded uh, through all the judgments of the court the law of co ownership and came to conclusion that the construction can be divided or bisected into two permanent or temporary two when the person comes to the court whether at the earliest opportunity or after the construction is over three the length of time taken for putting up construction four the construction made is whether within the is uh, share of the property or is exceeded its limit just read these two judgment you will master the law of co ownership another judgment rain <coughs> murlidhar hemde versus kanyalal hemde ar 1999 ar 1999 supreme court page 2171 again it has reiterated the very same principle about the law of uh, co ownership and the last of the two judgment on that aspect which i would like to uh, take up is uh, shankar lal versus uh, patti ram shankar lal versus patti ram ar 1937 allahabad page 293 ar 1937 allahabad page 293 where the court for the first time made a distinction between uh, construction of a permanent nature and that of a temporary nature if it is of a permanent nature the court say that uh, one can go and order for demolition of the building itself if he is exceeding his limit or changing the character once there is a permanent structure obviously it will be detrimental to the interest of the other co owner and therefore it can be demolished but if it is a temporary structure this can be taken into account at the time of filing a suit for partition therefore in all cases where one person acts in detrimental to the other man the law say that you go and file a suit for partition a mere suit for injunction you may get some relief but whether the finality will be reached then of course you have to go for a partition suit thereafter the <clears throat> next case ramlal versus jagannath ramlal versus jagannath A 1950, Allahabad Weekly Report, AWR, page 336. Ramlal versus uh, Jagannath, 1950, AWR 336. It was a case of an additional construction made by one of the sheriff. The court said that it will not change the character of possession. It is not a case of an ousting your right. It is only an additional construction. And the last of the judgment on that score, Midinapur Zamindar versus Naresh Narang, Midinapur Zamindar versus Naresh Narang, A.R. Nineteen Twenty Four Privy Council, <coughs> page one double four, page one double four. That was a case where the court has said that the remedy in such a case is not a suit for injunction; it is better or appropriate to go for a suit for partition. and in also in the, in the last two lines say that the uh, applying a probably it even though it doesn't discuss that uh, section 88 of the trust act it says that you can ask for mean profit only for 3 years not for a if it is a co owner you can normally ask for a profit uh, for a longer period but uh, for 12 years but uh, the court says that it is possible only for 6 years at that point of time the, under the old limitation act now it is 3 years the last chapter is that the fiduciary relationship among the co sharers the fiduciary relationship is de- uh, defined under section 88 of the trust act where by uh, taking undue advantage of the relationship between the parties namely husband and wife father and son guru and shishya etc 
whether that uh, there is absolutely no period of limitation for those cases and if you combine with the section 10 uh, of the limitation act but the court said that uh, section 88 of the trust act will not apply in case of a co owners think it will this theory will apply more in case of a modern law rather than a hindu law because uh, under modern law there is no concept of a joint family they are only tenants in common i'll refer to two judgment one is abdul rahim versus abdul akim abdul rahim versus abdul akim ilr 1930 madras page 543 ilr 1930 madras page 543 bharat rashi put say that uh, the fiduciary relationship as contemplated under section 88 of the trust bank is not applicable that has been followed subsequently in abdul samad khan kilader abdul samad khan kilader versus bb jan 1975 1 mlj page 675 to sum up in case of a ouster there is a you have to have much stronger proof than that of adverse possession in case of adverse possession what is required is only a hostile continuous adequate but in case of an ouster all these ingredients should namely our hostile adequate continuous uninterrupted should be brought to the knowledge of the co owner stating that i am in possession of the property in derogation or in denial of your title and then totally i should have lapsed two law by way of a long continuous possession will always infer if a person enjoy the property the fruits of the property or the profits of the property continuously for a quite number of years and, and the other man did in object or raise any objection then ouster can be inferred three there is no fiduciary relationship among the co-sharers four in case of a construction made by one party or the co-sharer co-owner in derogation of the right of the other co owner law has to see whether this construction is a permanent or temporary two whether the construction is made is within its limits or is or is share or the exceed that share four <coughs> whether this construction is an additional construction namely if a person has put up a construction and already there is a first of the ground floor of the property he wants to put up one room law says that it is not in derogation of the right it is doesn't change the character of possession so sunday i thank everybody to stop as uh, my friend vikas said will within one hour thank you very much as usual it was a uh, flurry of knowledge only yeah this is the way she says in an unregistered partition deed share of one co-owner is taken away but that co-owner started selling her share to others can other co-owner enter out sir on the basis of an unregistered partnership deed part, uh, un- a partition deed the answer is straight away in varadapullai's case varadapullai versus jeevaratna mall ilr 1990 madras page 244 privy council there was a case of a unregistered gift deed where it can be inferred the possession is against uh, in derogation of denial of right that is absolutely all subject to admissibility of a document you know very well there are two things available in case of an unregistered partition deed one is stamp duty and another is uh, registration even if the registration goes you have to pay the stamp duty and then in case of a partition there are three stages meets and bounds uh, one division in status that is a first two meets and bounds then three delivery of possession for first and three there is no need for any registered document you can even prove that without any evidence only in case of a meets and bounds one is required to have a registered document therefore an unregistered partition deed can be used provided you pay the stamp duty yeah since we have a uh, young lawyers and student of law also they would like to understand what is meets and bounds meets and bounds is exactly once a suit has been filed for partition 
there are two stages one is the preliminary degree and then a final degree if it if it comes to the partition meets and bounds means after fixing the share of the person who files a suit for partition and who asks for partition as a different then and then in the final degree proceeding the court will decide which property you will take all the properties which will be measured and then the final degree will be drawn after the both the parties uh, argue on the point or concede and then these division or the modes of division will be suggested by a commissioner or in cases of uh, partition without the intervention of the court if a partition deed takes place and it gives a detail of the properties which is allotted to a b c etc then that is called as the meets and bounds this requires if it is reduced into writing meets and bounds requires a registered document or it can be done through court namely by way of a suit for partition culminating in a final degree and then possession of the property yeah this is in youtube it says whether a plea of ouster against a co-owner can be used as a sword like the plea of adverse possession why not always uh, uh, even if you if you are able to prove ouster and this can be used as a, not only as a shield as well as a sword because the reason is a person it's one mode of acquiring the property in case of an adverse possession you acquire the entire property from a stranger in case of an ouster you acquire a portion or a share other by other shares property provided you are able to establish ouster you can even follow suit for declaration that you are absolute owner of the property on the basis of our ouster yeah so thank you for sharing your knowledge it's always a pleasure learning and unlearning from you thank unlearning, you i'm learning certain things which we feel that this is the correct way of law but once you understand then you understand that what has to be chipped off from the to make a better sculpture of knowledge yeah thank you thank you